Guys, I wanted to show you all this. This is a an old school design that's uh, really adjustable. This is a Benjamin Nitro Piston 2. It's uh, one of the shocky versions. And uh, usually has a barrel shroud right here, but it's a lot safer to take your shroud off when you can. And because you're putting pressure, you know, on the shroud. And if it's plastic threads, it's probably not a good idea for it. But uh, these compressors come with a little adapter here where you can, because there's threads on, you know, on the, the muzzle. And plus you don't want to mess up the crown of your barrel. And even if you don't use this adapter, there's enough room in here where you could put a really heavy duty foam pad in there to, to help some. Or even a piece of wood. And uh, what I like most about this is the way it compresses. There's no play in here. Whereas compared to some of our homemade compressors, even this one, this one's a really good one made by a friend of mine. But over the years, see how it got so, has a little play there. And that little bit of play can make a big difference if you're trying to put in like a spring for a Webley Patriot, you know, especially the Turkish ones or a Hat Sand 135. They're just monsters. And that kind of play, it really makes it kind of, well, almost dangerous. It's not dangerous. But let me flip this over and show you how it's really supposed to look here. See, with these nitro pistons, you just barely compress it, probably not even a quarter of an inch, and take that uh, pin out. And these things are probably compressed about that much. But there's no way you can do it manually. Believe me, I've tried every which way. You have to have a compressor. And uh, back here, this this disc will fit just about anything. But um, it's recommended that you'll use a, a, a socket if you need an adapter. Uh, there's several pieces of wood that I've cut, you know, that's for a browning gold, and the safety goes up in there, and you just have to, the browning gold has to be pushed in a triangular way, this here is probably for a Diana 34 or something, and uh, so I've, oh, maybe that's for the 34 for the safety, yeah, it compresses in like that, but you have to make your own adapters, you know, but another thing that's really cool is, Really, this sh should be a little further back, probably about right here. It's what's recommended. But I just threw this in here just to shoot a little bit of video for y'all. And there, there really ain't much to the the, the nitro piston twos. These are a very well made gun. Um, the trigger thing, you know, you have to do a little work on the trigger. But uh, my 22 caliber shocky trigger is very good. And it's it's beginning to group just as well as the Beeman R9. And one of the big improvements that they've made on these nitro piston twos, these barrels are made in America. And you'll know it when you order one. You'll know it when you put calipers on here. It's a different. Because I thought I'd just be able to stick a 25 caliber barrel from a Trail XL right in there. That barrel block pops right off. And I thought I'd be able to put it right in there, but you can see Trail XL barrels is quite a bit thicker. I was going to make a 25 caliber nitro piston too. Probably still will. Really, 20 caliber would be the way to go. If they want to resurrect Sheridan, guys, Crossman, if you happen to be listening, make a nitro piston to Sheridan with a nice wood walnut stock, and it would be on. And with a nice trigger, oh, man. But yeah, guys, th this uh, this compressor, very, very nice little thing to use here. And just with these nitro piston twos, there's really not much to it. You just knock this little pin out once it's under compression. And usually they come out even easier than that, but I'm just in a hurry. So there, there's the... The, the main thing that's holding the the gas ram, this little back piece right here, it's allowed to float around in there. 
you know it has it goes to the straight pin but other than that you can move it around a little bit and it'll it'll tilt this way and move this way so you kind of got to get that straight real good when you're putting it back together but let me show y'all this is all there is to the that's all the compression there is it's not even a quarter of an inch these right here is a very high quality steel that's where the piston rod rests right in there and you got to check that every once in a while because if your piston will start to wear in sideways it'll it'll make your whole piston kind of warped check that every once in a while another cool thing about the nitro piston two guns this little anti I usually take these off so I can uncock it but this is like a, a thing that keeps it from for you to pull in the trigger while the barrel's open but this is plastic and it makes it so much easier to you don't have to take the barrel off see you just boop. and uh, I want to show y'all something else real quick while I got this taken apart like there's the piston nitro piston 2 it's just, just a little bit longer than your nitro piston 1 pi piston but it's probably compressed a little bit better. And uh, what I really want to show you all is how well some of these parts are made, man. Unbelievable. How well. There's really not much to these Nitro Piston 2 guns. There can't, there's not much you can do to tune them. Um, but this piston is so damn well made. It's even got a little K on there for like a brand. I don't know if you can see that, but there's the, uh, well, they used to call them buttons for the Mercari kit. And this little thing right here kind of helps, it's supposed to help dampen it. It's almost a foam, but it's real hard foam. And you see how the piston head is supposed to be able to freely move around. And this uh, piston seal is very similar to the Trail XL seal. But uh, if you put the Trail XL seal in there, you, you won't get very good velocity. I tried it. Because I was waiting. When you order the parts for a Nitro Piston 2, right now anyway, they have to email you the um, blueprint. And there's just one part number for the whole piston. So I had to ask Crossman to send me a couple of piston seals. And they did. They're cool. Crossman's really cool. I mean, they're, they're the best in the industry for customer service. But these pistons, the, the the gas rim, these pistons are so made for this. I mean, on some of the other gas rims, I had to put like a little piece of plastic in there to cushion it. But there's like not much tolerance in there at all. Very well made. Very well made. Looks like all American parts. They say it's assembled in America, but the rifling in, the, in here is different than what the Chinese barrels are. And it looks a whole lot better on paper, guys. That 177 with those 10 grain pellets is shooting uh, just under 900 feet a second. With the with the Crossman Premier Lights, it's shooting uh, 1020. And it's pretty much the same exact numbers for a Diana Model 48 side lever. So definitely a Magnum, but it's easier to cock than Nitro Piston One and. I'm a big fan of it now that I've got a regular stock on here. I didn't like that thumb hole stock. The trigger, like I said, needs a little bit of work. Uh, they have the gold aftermarket triggers out there, and I haven't tried that yet, but I did get a, a tune, trigger tune kit. This is also an NPS trigger, or a Remington. Some of the Remingtons had that trigger. And uh, the tuning kits I found on eBay for about 12 bucks. And it basically, the main part is a lighter spring in there and then you've got shims and stuff he also sent some sandpaper because that's another thing you have to sand where all these parts come back together and that's what I'm about to pull this apart and do right now because uh, it'll be more accurate I just have to do these nitro piston two guns man they're not very expensive I haven't tried the Phoenix or the Summit um, but wow and one thing I really like about this Eva Shockey is the dang scope roll goes all the way back that's so cool the other scope rails are like that Weaver, Picatinny, whatever mount. And yeah, they're more sturdy and it's easier to put scopes on them. But they don't come back far enough for me. So. 
So yeah, guys, it was quick, simple thing. Sorry, it's been a long time since I shot any video, but I got these new compressors, and uh, you know, I do a lot of tuning for folks, but more than anything here lately, it's been Sheridan. Sheridan Blue Streaks. That's probably the Corvette of the American Air Guns. The Nitro Piston too. It's definitely a contender, but this right here is just an old classic, man. And I never thought I would like pumping, but uh, I'm really stuck on some pumpers now. I've got this one and a Benjamin 342, and also a Crossman Model 1 that I've really been shooting more than anything lately. So y'all get out there and do some shooting. I know it's hot, but, you know, take your kids out. Shoot in the backyard if you want, as long as you got adequate backstop. Been some lead, man. The shooting uh, air guns is purely recreational, so if anybody gives you any problems about it being a gun, it's not a firearm. It's a recreational, it's just a, really just not much more than a toy. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about these PCPs that Texas is one of the last states, there's only three or four states that don't allow hunting uh, deer or whatever, game animals with a large bore PCP, but I don't know why they make pretty much the most powerful ones right here on the other side of town, Air Force. And I'm just not a big fan of that big boar yet. Or maybe someday. Anyway. Cheers.